In this video, we are going to talk about two-dimensional arrays. Up to this point, uh, we've only talked about 1D arrays, which are useful a container to store information. But 2D arrays are nice because they actually model things like game boards and whatnot, so you can store information in a rectangular type format. So let's talk about how to create a 2D array. So I have a template here, and I'm going to create an array of integers. Okay. Uh, so when you create an array, normally you put one set of brackets. Now I'm going to put two sets of brackets to denote a two-dimensional array. And I'll call this a grid equals new uh, int of 3 by 4. And the 3 and 4 re refer to rows and columns. So if you take a look at this array here, it's three rows, numbered 0, 1, 2, and four columns, numbered 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's always RC, row column. Just think remote control RC. Um, right now it's empty, so I'm going to put some information into it. Now with a for with an array, we use the for loop, and we're going to do something similar in a 2D array, except we're going to have a for loop inside of a for loop, which is called a nested for loop. Okay, and it looks something like this: for int row. Now in 1D arrays, I've always had to use index, and we still are, except these are a little more specific. They're actually row indices and column indices. So I'll just say row and column row less than the grid dot length and row plus plus one two three and four now the new thing is I want to put a for loop inside of a for loop in column equals zero column less than grid zero dot length now notice I put a zero here we're going to come back to that and find out why that is column plus plus one two three and inner four and I should have put outer four here to differentiate between the different uh, for loops so what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to just like I read a book I'm going to start here and put a number in this spot 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 when I'm done come down over here and cycle across and cycle across that is basically called in a fancy uh, way, um, row major order, like reading a book. That's all it really means. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to each spot. I'm going to go to grid, row, column, and I'm, I'm going to put in row plus column. It's going to be an addition table. I'm going to put in whatever the value of row and column are into that spot. So let's let's pretend we're the computer. I'm going to say rows equal to zero. Then I go inside the for loop and say columns equal to zero. So zero plus zero is zero. I'm going to put a zero there. Then I'm going to increment column by one to go over here. So zero plus one is one. Zero plus two is two. Zero plus three is now three. So this inner for loop takes me across the grid across the four columns, and when I reach the end, again, at zero I'll talk about in a second, when I reach the end, now rows one. So one plus zero is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, one plus three is four. When I'm done, I'm gonna go to increment row again. Two plus zero is zero, two plus one is three, Excuse me, this is 2, wrong addition. 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 plus 2 is 4. And 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay? So I'm, this is an addition table taking into account corresponding uh, rows and columns. Now, after I do that, I, I've put information into the array. Now, to print it out, just so we can see what it looks like, I'm going to just basically copy this. And instead of assigning information to a spot, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to print it out using a system.out.print line like that. So I'll visit each row and column, and I'll print out what's that at that spot, which should look something like that. Let's compile it, and let's run it. And lo and behold, I get that. Okay, so the numbers look right. 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five. But it doesn't look like a 2D array to me. So let's let's fix that. So it looks like after I finished printing one entire row, I want to go to the next line. So let's see. After I've gone through an entire row here, or visited each column, I should say. Right after that, let's not let's do this. Let's do system dot out dot print line. Let's go backslash n. Let's put a new line. Okay. Let's see if that does it. Seems like after I visit all of the items in a certain column, I enter I print a new line which goes over here. Let's see if that works. Compile. Okay, let's run it. And it's a little it's a little bit closer, except it looks like we are this should be a cross. It looks like for some reason when I print zero, I go to the next line and print one and two and three. So why is that happening? Why am I I want it to go across? So let's take a look at the code again. And notice when I print out a specific number, I'm doing a print line. Let's take the ln out. The ln, let's just go print, which means don't print an extra line. Let's just print. Let's save that. Compile it. Looks good. And run it. And that looks better. Okay, so it kind of looks like 0, 1, 2, and so forth. And we can add some spaces in there. Why don't we do that? Add some spaces in there to see if it uh, space it a little better. We'll go plus a space. Okay, save it, compile it. And there you go. There's my 2D array. Okay, 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's an addition table. Okay, now let's go back and talk about it, this detail here. This 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 sounds reasonable. Grid dot length. Okay, this is the length of the rows. There's there's three rows. All right. Now why is this here? Okay. Well, that takes us to this picture over here. This is what we visualize a, a 2D gr grid as being, or a game board. In memory, it actually looks like this. It's an array, a, a array of three, a length three, like a 1D array. But at each element of the array, I have an array itself. So this is the zeroth row, that's this row right here. But it's actually an array, array of arrays. And that array inside has four elements for the column. So when I do this grid.0, what am I doing? I'm saying, hey, go to this, hey, uh, computer, go to the zeroth row. Okay, great, right here. Find the length of what's inside the zeroth row. Well, what's inside the zeroth row is a four element array. The length is four. That makes sure when I when I when I use this for loop here, I only go across four elements. So it's less than four. So even though we see it as this, or we should visualize it as this, internally the computer is saying it's an array of arrays. So that's why the zero is here. I'm saying visit the zeroth row. Tell me how long the thing inside of it is. So since this is pretty symmetrical, I could have put grid one or grid two because they're all basically the same length. Typically, we just go to the zero row and go, how long is the thing inside it? Because they're all the same there. So that explains that zero there. And that explains why this doesn't have a zero. It's just saying the length of the array, which is actually here. Um, so in a nutshell, we have a 1D array of arrays, which if you draw it, it looks like this. Okay. We won't really refer to this diagram. We refer to this diagram uh, in class and in exams. But internally, that's why that zero is there. So um, to create a 2D array, first step, we put two sets of brackets. And remember, it's always row and column, R, C. All right. We have a nested for loop. So it's a for loop in a for loop. And notice how I use row and column here instead of index, because these are actually both indices. But to differentiate, I say row and column. We talked about the zero issue here. And then I can visit each cell and put in a row and a column. And then I can visit each cell here and print out what's there, okay? And um, within the, uh, the the main there. So that's an example of how you create, uh, populate, and print out uh, things in a 2D array.